The Right Ricky Sanchez podcast is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Sign up for DraftKings Sportsbook by using promo code RTRS. Brought to you by Touchstone Electric Fireplaces. Get yours at zerodeadbirds.com. Use promo code TTP for 15% off. And L. L. Pavorsky Jewelers, where Right Ricky Sanchez listeners go and get engaged. On the show today, a big guest, if we get our big guest, we'll see. Um, more information on the NBA reopening plan, which um, has a, a tell on someone line, which we'll discuss. Joel Embiid gets a driver's license. Ben Simmons isn't 100%. Brian Colangelo is back in basketball. Josh Harris and David Blitzer by part of the Steelers. What a we do two podcasts a week and there's still this much to talk about. What is going <laughs> no, on? It's ridiculous. Um, and Kevin Durant buys part of the union. And sure. the, the return of a process legend and getting ready to once again compete in basketball in the United States once again in the basketball tournament, TBT, one Tony Roten return trip to the Ricky. Um, the script for Brotherly Love, written by Mike and Patrick Kang, um, will be for sale starting June 25th for one week only. The uh, art is done by Abby, our very own Abby, and um, all of the funds will go to the uh, Coded by Kids CBK Academy and the Providence Animal Center um, uh, Canine College, and all funds will be matched by Touchstone Electric Fireplaces. So... Um, sign up for the newsletter, check us out on Twitter. We will give you the information very, very, very soon. Or June 25th, we'll give you the information. So that's coming soon. Uh, without any further ado, Amos and the chef. Larry, sweetie, the man is here. Welcome to the Rice Ricky Sanchez podcast. I'm Spike Eskin, along with a guy who has been slapping the hardwood until Tony Roten returned to the pod. That is Mike Levin. Yeah. Hands are getting sore. I did play. I haven't said this. I did play oh. uh, for Alyssa's birthday. We went up to uh, visit her mom and her brother. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a, a park that was open. Oh. And uh, we all we played horse and all had our own ball. So we weren't having to share a ball and we were wearing masks. Um, and let me tell you, I the, by the, the way. shot, the shot isn't great. Uh -huh. I've been playing mini basketball in my apartment with, with this ball, which is uh -huh. pretty small. And so it really ruined my, uh, my release, but you get it back after, after about an hour of uh, missing everything short, uh, <laughs> it came back a little bit. Yeah. They put the rims back on the backboards at the park near me and it's mostly empty. Um, they're the double rims, which are the, the worst anyway. And I was walking by it with Val and I was like, you know, I can bring my basketball and shoot down here. I'm like, no, no, I, that, that, those days are far over for me. <laughs> Shooting by yourself, those days are over? Well, I could, but what will happen is, and I, I realized this the last time I was bowling too, is that like, I, I don't have like the willpower to just take it easy. So I could shoot it by myself, but there's, it's a full court and I like to be active and I just know that I would run and like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I just, I, the, the way that, the way that I don't eat bad food, like the, you know, I lost weight years ago. The way that I don't do it is not keeping it in the house. If it's in the house, I'll eat all of it. So I'm just, I'm just worried that I would do something stupid. Sure. I can shoot, you know, without hurting my back. But. Just imagining you like seeing a court and being like, well, I have to run the length of the court and try to dunk <laughs> over and over again. I just have to do it. I have to. So I guess my question to you is Kevin Durant officially a sixer now that he bought, spent $16 million on part of the Philadelphia union. Why, why is that? Well, I would imagine that they 
so that area where they put what what stadium is it now? Is it Samsung? It was PPL Park. It's not anymore. I think it's Samsung. As everyone Chester. knows, I love the union. Big union guy. <laughs> the One of my great. favorite. All the players. Hard to name my favorite. Yep. Um, so that area, they built the stadium in Chester. It's a beautiful stadium. It was, stuff was supposed to build around it. And it never happened. And I get the sense that the union are trying to do it themselves, like build up just an area for people to hang out before and after games. And my guess is they needed cash. And I, I think I read that Kevin Durant got 5% of the union for $16 million. And my guess is a, a major league soccer franchise, which was valued, I think that valuation was like $275 million. Like in 10 years is going to be a pretty solid investment. That, that would be my my inclination that an MLS franchise is not going to go down in value. I don't think. Um, yeah. Durant definitely not. has the business acumen. He definitely wants to be like an investee type. I think right. he is already yes. actually. He is. That's, that's what they, they buy. Uh, he loves, it was one of the most inseparable parts of the podcast with him and Bill Simmons was <laughs> talking about his investing. Not that he I don't can't know what, do it. I, I don't know what kind of guy I would be if I had, you know, $40 million or some incredible amount of money. I don't think I'd be an investee guy. No. Well, I mean, I guess cool I would buy. Involved, I, guess I'd, I think. Right. I guess I'd, yeah. I would do. I would buy like a piece of a sports team. I, I could see that, or maybe like a restaurant. I guess. Yeah. What else would I do? I'd invest yeah. in things that I think is cool, but I guess those people are doing things they think are cool, which yeah. I guess is like a you know for people doing Bitcoin or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, I won't have to worry about this, and that's no. That's a nice You're thing. not going to have a spare sixteen million dollars to no, invest in it, and it's good. And what a relief <laughs> that is off well, my back. Speaking of investing in teams, oh boy, did we have some investing uh, this week. Oh my God. So before we get to the, the big one, I, I want to mention the Josh Harris, David Blitzer buying a part of the Steelers. And this is all part of the Josh Harris, David Blitzer long con of trying to buy the NFL Europe team when it comes out. That's what is that, I believe. Is that true? I, I believe it is. And, and everyone wants, everyone in, in, like in their position is positioning themselves to by that sort of team. I think that's actually part of Michael Rubin's visibility over the last couple of years. You have all these the like theories, all these tea leaves that you're like, well, it's obviously because they want NFL Europe team. Well, some of my stuff, I mix in tea leaves with things that like I may have heard. So it all sounds like tea leaves. This one is definitely tea leaves though, but I definitely believe that it's true. But, I'll hear uh, like one thing in like 2016 and be like, that's still true. <laughs> I heard it one time and I was like, someone texted it to me. And so I know it's that still thing. True. I don't know. I don't hear enough. I don't hear enough to have any real opinions about it. As you know, my, I was still back then thinking that the Sixers are going to win a 2017 title behind uh, Andrew Wiggins and Noah Vonley. Right. Yes. So, um, th but my favorite part of this is that the, the thing that came out with their, with the report that they were interested in the Mets is that they were interested in creating a regional sports network. Now, this is really the nail in the coffin, as we know that there are many people in the Northeast region with combo tattoos, like the Delco Philly sports teams ones, with the Steelers, the Mets, the Devils, and the Sixers, creating <laughs> a sports network really dialed in. Like, this is how you can tell that Josh Harris is really dialed into the sports fan, is that this sports network will combine four teams, the Mets, the Steelers, the Devils, and the Sixers that everyone has always been fans of together. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to all the programming that really goes together. <laughs> These fucking guys, man. <laughs> they have so much money. They have so much money. They're like, let's just buy a little piece of the Steelers. I mean, the Steelers are like one of the, the probably the, the three or four most valuable franchises in the in the NFL, maybe I would guess like they, they definitely have the history for it. Unbelievable. So congratulations I, I, to Blitz and, and Josh Harris. What? Why are they? I know the answer to why are they doing it? Do they care? Do they give yeah. any shit about like their, the people that are fans of their team? No, no. they no, give no shit. No, zero shits, zero shits. And Transferring over, I guess, segging over to the other thing. I do the sad thing about Brian Colangelo buying his way back into basketball in Australia after a fake interview with the Bulls is 
the thing about it is, in a very general sense, he does care and, and want to be involved in basketball. Like, obviously, he wants to be involved in basketball. But having to buy a team to have any say, and, and no offense to Australia, but to have that team be an NBL team in Australia, the, wait, hold on, let me say this correctly, the Illawarra Hawks of the NBL. Of the which, NBL which LaMelo Ball, I think, owns a, most of, a piece of, most of. As well, and, and I didn't tell you this, we already got an email from inside the organization of Ricky oh Fent. In the, yes. So we're good. I, I feel good. I feel very um, just in solidarity with and almost mm -hmm. like pr proud of what they are going to do for the Ricky listeners that live in that area, just Australia in general, but oh my God. there are a couple there. They get Brian Colangelo. They get Brian Colangelo. And what a treat for yeah. them, you know, to be so far away, like claiming Ben Simmons, which they are like have every right to do uh -huh. uh, and being like, we're Sixers fans. We're invested in this thing, but being so far away. And now just the blessing of Brian Colangelo strolling down to you. Yep. What a, what a real treat that's going to be. If he ever shows when he comes to a game and stuff and, you know, seeing what, what kind of collars they're going to pull out. It's, I'm just very mm -hmm. happy for them and excited to see what they come up with. It's like they won the lottery almost on this one. Like the, like the lottery party, like finally Australia gets a part of something back there, you know? Um, so a couple of lines. Uh, from we're, we're obviously not going to do a, a fly the process to Australia. That's crazy yet. But in a couple of years, if the Sixers draft somebody and have their rights in Australia, mm -hmm then it becomes a little like pretty close to happening i would say i've always wanted to go to australia look there's uh, there's a bunch of things happening here first of all there's this um and all the australian people At, as if you remember when butch walker was on there are two cafes in australia named after butch walker songs my favorite band ever is silver chair now they're from australia they are not together anymore I have to say the fly the process to Australia is actually I've always wanted an excuse to go to Australia. It's at like a 24 or 29 hour flight or something like that. It's not there, a bad reason to do it. Yeah. yeah. It's not a are you mad about, are you mad about that? We can get back to Brian for a second. Are you mad about yeah. the Blitzer Harris? Do you feel anything other than just like the same amount of. No, I, I can't get mad about it anymore. I can only hope that this gets them what they want in the NFL. So they have to, so they sell the the Sixers. That would be my my guess because I think the rule in the NFL is if you own another sports team, it has to be in the same city or something. Like, what's the rule? Or it can't be in the same city? Isn't know. there some rule in the NFL because the guy that owns the Seahawks owns the the uh, soccer team out there? I think mm -hmm. I think that's the rule or something. The Sounders. Yeah, I I just want I just want them out here. That this doesn't. This is just more. It just shows that they are exactly what we have professed that they are. Totally. Um, the Mets thing and then the Steelers thing. Just, just hedge fund douchebags mm -hmm. that are the worst. That don't care. Like ideally for an owner, you would want someone who lives in Philadelphia. And or stays here for the night. <laughs> or cares about the city. Yeah. Or has some like semblance of it. Isn't mm -hmm. just like showing up in like a really lame collared shirt that like somehow costs eight hundred dollars yeah right i look I, I what are the odds he's ever slept three consecutive nights in philadelphia since college very slim right five percent gotta be zero yeah yeah I, I don't need him to no i i think his primary residence actually should be here actually i don't even think that's a crazy fucking thing to ask that's not no. even like a philly thing to ask for the person that owns the the fucking team to right, live here. but especially in philly like right come on yeah let's have a little more pride about where we are and he lives in new york it's not even anyway so a couple of lines from the colangelo thing from the woge story about it uh first one colangelo 55 won't have a role running the franchise as president or gm but will assist in the governance and strategy as an equity partner to the ownership group sources tell espn i wonder what sources told ESPN <laughs> <laughs> the, the team will continue with Australian centric basketball. Um, it's good to know that even giving a bunch of money to the team would not buy him an official role. 
<laughs> in the front office. The other, the other quote here, this is the best part of the article. This is Colangelo's first foray back into professional basketball since his untidy exit in Philadelphia. Untidy. Where, untidy. Where a social media controversy led to his resignation in 2018. Mm. A Sixers investigation absolved Colangelo, which sure. it did not. It did not absolve him. It said that they didn't, they, they had no proof, but it did not absolve him. A Sixers investigation absolved Colangelo, but re revealed that his wife, Barbara, had operated multiple controversial Twitter accounts in an attempt to support her husband. So he leaks it to Woj. He throws his fucking wife under the bus again. <laughs> Woj prints his lies. And I was tweeting about it. Um, that we had somebody in the organization, and we do, Brian. And I felt bad for a second, and then I remember the tweets about us not actually donating the money to charity. That's right. And I was like, "Fuck him, yeah, <laughs> fuck this guy, yeah, fuck him." I just I can't express how desperately I want Barbara to divorce him, <laughs> come up with a tell-all, start dating like a hot 24 year old guy like live your best life get out of there do you i'm think, tired of this do you think Alyssa would if barbara bettini just wanted a date yeah just one date a date could could you get away with that one you want me to story? you want me to spite date brian colangelo's wife and get permission okay. from Melissa to do it. I, I'd have the conversation. <laughs> okay, that's all I want. I can promise the conversation. That's all I want. Alyssa would also probably want to come and ask a few questions. So maybe right. I go on one date with Barbara and then Alyssa goes on her own date with Barbara. Well, maybe, maybe you guys turn it into a pitch it, turn it into a reality show. She can cover it on the pod. There you go. That there sounds good. Go. The right to Ricky I re said- I really, oh, No, I really want to know. I really want to know. Yeah. I need to know more information. It is crazy. Like it felt, I think we probably talked about this before. Um, how long until Colangelo returns to public life? And this is his first baby step. Now public life, uh, a continent, a few continents away. Mm -hmm. um, but this, it is, it, it was two years and it, and it felt like two years was the, was the like proper banishment time. Yep. But we haven't learned anything new. We've no. learned nothing new since those few weeks afterwards and i and i just need to find out some more and i i'm i'm unsatisfied i feel like we were we only talked about that for at least a month after <laughs> and you're unsatisfied. And we have not covered this story enough. we haven't covered it enough we haven't covered it enough <laughs> the rice ricky sanchez podcast is brought to you by our friends at touchstone electric fireplaces who are the sponsor of the uh, Brotherly Love script release. They are, they are yes. um, matching all of the funds that go to the uh, Coded by Kids CBK Academy and the Providence Animal Center K-9 College. So thank you, Touchstone. Um, That's very cool. Electric Fireplace. Yeah, they're down for whatever. Frank over at Touchstone's down for whatever. He's like, yeah, let's do it. Um, I was like, do you want to match? He's like, yeah, let's do it. So, so it's pretty cool. Abby did some great artwork on the script yep. as well. So that'll come out soon. And imagine reading the script, sitting by your fake fire with the <laughs> Touchstone electric fireplace. Who wants a real fire? It's going to stink. You're going to have ash all in front of the fucking fireplace. You don't want any of that. You want your house to look cool with a, you know, you could, the way that look, you can- Look cool, feel warm. Yes. Tot that's the, that's there better than zero dead birds. Come on. Yeah, look cool, feel warm. Look, you, you, it's easy to install it. You, you could even recess it into the wall. It, like, it looks like a painting, but it's like this alive fireplace, mm -hmm. all different sizes, 36 inches wide to 100 inches wide. Like I said, no ash, no stink. Your, your room doesn't smell like, like, a, like a campfire. Your living room doesn't smell like a campfire afterwards. Um, and now they have a sale going on, a uh, few hundred dollars off some refurbished ones with a full warranty, completely awesome. And like I've always said, because you don't need a chimney, you don't have to deal with any dead birds. Go to zerodeadbirds.com. Use promo code TTP for 15% off. Zerodeadbirds.com. You go to zerodeadbirds.com, you can see it. You see all the fireplaces as well, all the different ways that you can, um, you can like, uh, what's it called? Like all the different ways you can install it. Uh, five flame intensities from super intense that you'd be scared of to like 
one that's not different colors. You get the blue flame, you get the orange flame, in wall, on wall, whatever the fuck. You I want. need to be scared. If I get this in my small apartment, then I would need to be terrified. There's one I saw, and I told him when we do the the podcast with your writing partner Patrick that I will use a Zoom um, virtual background of one of the uh, one of the fireplaces. Mm-hmm. My favorite one is when they install it right under the TV, so you have the TV on the wall, and then right under this thing, um, you can see all that. Look, the shipping's quick. Uh, they're right here in Exton. Deliveries two to three days max. They have customer service always ready, whether you want to do it on the phone, uh, email, or right there on the site. They have chat. Go to zerodeadbirds.com. Use promo code TTP for 15% off our friends at Touchstone Electric Fireplaces. Um, all right. What's next? Joel Embiid uh, got a driver's license. I don't so, like it. Well, my question is, how does he even... How is that even open yet? Right. It, doesn't it seem weird? Seems weird. Yeah. I, right? I, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Uh, I'm worried enough about like me and Alyssa and like my family members in various states mm-hmm. and how they're, how, whether they're being lax or whatever mm-hmm. um, with the virus. I I almost entirely stayed away from trying to find out what the Sixers are doing because it'll it'll give me way too much agita. Yep. Maybe it happened like long before, and he just wasn't able to drive yet, which mm. is a possible. Um, what what enjoy- an optimistic take from from you. Very rare, a rarely. I'm in a good optimistic mood. take. Yeah. Yeah. I also yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to dig deep. It's Joel. I'm easy on him anyway. Everybody <laughs> knows that. The. Uh, you ready to pilot time- about Joel? Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought. Um, I just also don't want him to be – he's too big to drive. He's right. too big. Go lay in the back. You have all the money you ever need. Let somebody else drive you around. Well, he's probably jealous of Ben's Instagram pictures where he's rolling up in his <laughs> fucking cars or whatever. Uh, maybe sure. he'd drive a minivan like Butler. He could fit in a minivan with his the seat all the way pushed back. Do you – remember uh, in georgia by the way they were you didn't even have to take your driver's test during COVID or something like they would give you your license and then you have to go back when this is all over and take your driver's test which wow yeah lawlessness yeah do you remember when you took your driver's test and how it went uh yeah i think i uneventful i think it went like mostly fine i took it uh like near the neshaminy mall or oxford valley mall one of them did you fit did you pass it the first time? Yes, I did. I failed the first time. I uh, During the parallel parking part, I hit the curb, and apparently that's mm. like 31 points off. It, whatever it is, it's disqualifying. So, I definitely uh, passed with like a like a mediocre. It wasn't like a, this is the best we've ever seen. I was definitely you, just like, fine, get out of here. Do you consider yourself – I imagine you as a cautious driver. Um. You, are, I, no, I would not driver? say I'm cautious. I would not say I'm like aggressive either. So I'm pretty, I'm the, I'm the Tobias Harris of driving. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Perfectly fine. He asked, um, and the other thing is like, like, what car does he show up in the, like he can't just go in like a driver's school the car, yeah. right? He's going to, uh, it's gonna be the whatever time next time we see him showing up in a car or whatever it's gonna be him in like a huge like whatever you know hummer well, did, black did car he, or something like that did he bring that to the test i'm just i, I like the logistics of this he's um, not he's not driving like a honda civic no It'd be fun he, if asked, he had to though he asked what his first car should be i mean it's just got to be a giant like fucking like double size escalate or something he's too big for anything else too big i don't want him driving i don't want any of the sixers driving yeah hmm well good luck joel um i guess once he goes down to orlando it'll be a while oh maybe bumper car joel are there bumper cars in disney world and drill and b tears his meniscus on bumper (laughs) cars do you want to talk Uh, about orlando well i'm we gotta i feel like i should send Tony wrote in the info okay. again. 
So I'm going to send it to him. We'll start talking about Orlando. If Tony Roten comes on, we'll talk to Tony Roten. If not, um, we'll just keep talking about Orlando. I uh, obviously yesterday, a lot of uh, new updates from the whatever protocol handbook for how to uh, hold millionaire athletes hostage in a resort uh, came out and what they're allowed to do and how many decks of cards they'll need. It's all so stupid. It's all so dumb. I get, I get why if you're going to do it, you have to be, do it. Think about things down to the T. I understand. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they, a lot of like, because what would happen was if somebody got it with a contaminated deck of cards, somebody would say, wait a minute. Why wasn't this in the handbook? Right. Like they got to play cards somehow like you were playing basketball everybody's gonna have their own deck <laughs> yeah i don't know how that works digitally it's yeah i in my mind this shouldn't happen i don't think this is w- worth it in any way i know that there's a lot of money on the line for a lot of people including the players including the players right um and so that and so that a lot of them want to pl- want to play just for the basketball reasons and also want to mm-hmm. play for the financial reasons, rightfully so, whatever they need. Yeah. It, I wanna, this all I, seems like way, way, way you get down into the nitty gritty and then you step back and you're like, are we really doing this? We're saying that they're going to be able to like run into each other and take charges and set screens and cover someone and tr- defend the rim. But then like you have to play cards from like two arms length away and like have like a, maybe a, a ramp. Well, to slide that, your card onto the table and that's that's where you're going to be cautious it, it just doesn't well, and there's barbers I, that are going to be there it's like really this is what we're well i got it it's complicated <laughs> for sure and i get you want to make players comfortable and i get that they will want things and deserve things but at a certain point i don't know how you like start to do like halfway through this list and you're just not like i've written a script before where you're like i got this is bad i did i did all this work on the script and i thought it was good and i thought there were funny things and then I'm on page like whatever. If it's a feature, I'm on page like 53, and you're like, you know what? Gotta gotta Fuck call it. it. Fuck it. <laughs> and I think that they should have, when they got to like page, you know, 83 of the handbook, they should have been like, you know what? We really we put some good work in here, uh, and ultimately, it's just not it's not for us. It's not gonna it's not a not not gonna go not gonna see the light of day. So a couple of things. First of all, one one prevailing opinion that I keep seeing is like, you guys don't need to do this for us. We don't need basketball. Don't, I, I want to be clear that the players are not doing this out of the kindness of their hearts for us to watch something like some, some like hot takey people are saying that they should though. Sure. But that's not why they're doing, it. they're sure. doing it for, for their own personal basketball reasons, as you say, and business and like, and like, and, and for what it's worth, like, and I don't think this is, maybe it goes into calculus for some, but not for all that the money also like spreads out. Like there are, there, there are a lot of jobs that are like sort of dependent on this. So there are, there are reasons for them to do it for themselves. They're not doing it for us. So I, I'm glad that you are willing to not watch basketball for the next few months to let them off the hook, but they do have some personal reasons to do it. All yeah. the things you said considered, that's why they're doing it. Um, I think a lot of the handbook is lip service, to be honest with you. I think like, um, to your point, they're going to be playing basketball against each other and they're all tested before they go in there, right? So like the, the idea is, okay, we know that they don't have it so they can play basketball against each other. The idea that they have to wear a mask while playing cards is almost like you wearing a mask playing cards with your girlfriend in the house that you live with right we're allowed to we're allowed to have as much sex as we want but over the dinner table we're gonna need to put on a mask correct um i mostly just love the the great reason for it to happen look is there it will be fucking hilarious and ridiculous the rules are, or the, the, like the leaks that have come out from Shams about all this stuff are incredible. I, th- mm. That's all I have to say. The hotline is really solid. Yeah. So the top one, just, we just have to start at the big one, is 
per me and Sam Amick, the NBA will create an anonymous hotline to report potential violations of protocols in Orlando. Great. So it's just like, great. Uh, this is not Pat Beverly, but um, I just saw LeBron and Kyle Kuzma. <laughs> they were taking a walk to Space Mountain. They were right next to each other. They were they were right next to each other. I I couldn't put a a, a playing card between them. Um, who, who do you think on the Sixers is the most likely to be reported, and the most likely to be the hall monitor that reports somebody? Interesting. Um, I think the hall monitor is a pretty obvious Al Horford. Uh, yeah, I didn't even think of that. It, it is pretty. Uh, and who's most likely to be reported? I think is a pretty obvious Joel Embiid. Although uh, he's pretty, um, he's a homebody. He's well, a homebody. He doesn't seem to care for rules that much mm-hmm. or being told what to do. Um, Simmons has a little bit of that as well. Uh, I just don't want Zaire to go. Look at he's been yeah. through so much. Oh yeah, he's he's in a lot of risk, Zaire. For sure. Are there two naked lady drawings behind you? Uh, yeah. That's, oh, uh, that's Beyonce and Serena Williams. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, a, I like uh, I like needle, the new set. Point. Oh, yeah, I, oh, needlepoint! I haven't heard a needlepoint in like yeah years. That's and incredible. That's my, that's my basketball net. Oh, I love it. And that's my art basketball net. You're seeing it all. You know, we might have to do tours of the rooms that we're oh, in. Oh, yeah, it's really – my, my tour would take about 14 seconds. <laughs> um, okay, I think you're, you're probably – well, I'm trying to – I actually believe that Ben is the most likely to be reported because he's probably the most likely – like, I feel like he's the most likely to sneak off for a date. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or, or you- like, people don't ben, – Ben's, like uh, – sort of lack of emotion on his face generally and like how successful he is like he had, I think he rubs people the wrong way I don't know if he's well liked in the NBA community I generally I just don't know mm-hmm. um Embiid has a deserved reputation for like talking trash online but uh Ben I think people are like respect him but like also you know similar to the fans kind of can't get a read on him mm-hmm. um and uh and so I wonder if some if there's some like you know, I think actually Devin Booker does. They are friends, I think. But I, someone like Devin Booker just go, going after Ben and being like, "Fuck this guy! I'm gonna report his ass." Yeah, I think that's possible too. Did you pick Devin Booker because of the um, obvious? De- weren't they dating the same girl? Isn't they were? That is not why I picked him, or at least okay. intention, or at least mindfully so. Okay. I think I think Devin Booker's just kind of like twerp like. You've never liked Devin Booker, yeah, all the way going back to when you wouldn't trade Okafor for him. All right. That was the first – like the Sixers wouldn't have traded Okafor for him because he drafted him first, <sighs> and most of the league would have. And in fairness, the only thing I knew about Devin Booker was I saw him in the three-point shooting contest, and I was like, this guy's good. He's just a little baby. He's just such a little baby. All his he, whole little baby does, movements and baby face <laughs> and baby arms. He does have like sort him. of a little baby face. Um, all right, the next one. Uh, the NBA will have two rows on the bench. The first row, players and coaches, no mask required, but recommended that coaches wear masks. In the second row, other players and coaches must wear masks at all times unless it's an active player. I wonder if they're going to get those. Did you see those Under Armour sport masks that came out and sold out in like two seconds? They're back ordered until um, – like the mask thing is an opportunity for Nike and Under Armour and, sure. and that kind of stuff. I'm sure I did see – so, people are trying, starting to do masks for men as if, as if we need like a little more masculinity to wear a mask. Why yeah. we, we have to gender that? Put a football I want my mask to like kick someone's fucking ass. <laughs> Can you put some fucking barbecue sauce on my mask? Ridiculous. Made out of wood and nails and football <laughs> and beer. My mask so made out of beer. Yeah. My mask is more like a man cave. <laughs> Come on, get out of here. Um, the next one, uh, NBA refs will not be required to mo- wear masks. I, like, look, if they're running up and down the court like that, that's totally. I, yeah. I, I just think that's why, like, either you're in or you're out. Is right. my is the way I look at it. And that's why, really, and that's why you have to hold people hostage. I'm now encouraging the hostage situation um, because either you're in or out. And if you're in and you're and you don't and you don't 
have a positive test, then you're in. Right. Right. If, if you don't have a positive test, that, that should, whatever. Okay. The next one. And I think, you know, we said that, um, we said that the, uh, the hotline might be the best story. This might actually be the best story. NBA teams, Disney hotels based on seating. Here we go. The Grand Destino, which I guess is the best one. Bucks, Lakers, Raptors, Clippers, Celtics, Nuggets, Jazz, and Heat. Mm -hmm. The Grand Floridian, which sounds like it's from National Lampoon mm -hmm. or something. It's also like, it could be if there was like a big lumpy center, that could be his nickname from Florida. Oh my. Which honestly, maybe <laughs> if, if Al Horford was like four inches taller, he could be the Grand Floridian. Oh my God, he is the Grand Floridian, isn't he? <laughs> Uh, he's, not, he's not like big and lumpy enough. He's too like in shape. It's like the it's like the old man. It's sort of like if, if Brian Shaq... Big Country Reeves was from Florida, he'd be the Grand <laughs> Floridian. It sounds Shaq esque too, the Grand yeah. Floridian. Yeah. The Thunder, the Sixers, the Rockets, the Pacers, the Mavs, the Nets, the Grizzlies, and the Magic. And what an indictment! Hey Sixers, there's going to be playoff seating where you're going to stay at a hotel based on how good you are. And you're going to be in a tier with the magic. Have a good season. Yep. And what, the a, Nets. what an indictment on, on what the Sixers have, have done this off season. And the Grizzlies, they're not, they're not even in the playoffs. Oh no, they are. They're a seed. Okay. Staying and with the, the, staying with the Grizzlies and magic. What a joke. And then the yacht club, um, the Blazers, the Kings, the Pelicans, the Spurs, the Suns, and the Wizards. There's definitely going to be betting. Our, our, our pals at DraftKings should have a betting of who, uh, what hotel is going to win. Oh, that is you, a like, good if idea. You, bet, you can bet the Grand, Grand Floridian, and you can put, like, which is honestly probably just, like, Sixers and Rockets of, of teams who have, like, somewhat of a chance, except mm -hmm. our Thunder, which, which I obviously love. Um, and it's, like, probably, you know, plus 700 Grand, Grand Floridian. Again, um, and and Grandestina, you could get like minus, you know, like three thousand or something. Yeah, well, because Bucks and Lakers and Clippers are all in there, so yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of DraftKings, the Rice and Ricky Sanchez podcast are presenting sponsor. By the way, but so before we started, I was like, look, I prepared the podcast as if Tony Roten might not come on because when you're dealing with these guys yourself, you're really just sort of like you're taking a chance. Mm -hmm. the, good, the good news is that Jake Pavorsky has told us that, um, wait, who are the two guys? Darius Johnson Odom is part of TBT. I can get him. And Casper Ware. And right. perhaps soon to be added, this is not 100% sure yet, but perhaps soon to, soon to be added Isaiah Cannon. And I would love Isaiah Cannon on the pod. So if we don't get, maybe Tony will be late. I don't know. I, I texted him. We'll see. Um, but speaking of DraftKings, the Rice Ricky Sanchez podcast is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, it looks like baseball has come to an agreement. And I would imagine as soon as that is, uh, is cemented, they will have futures bets on Major League Baseball. I wonder if my Houston Astros World Series uh, bet will hold. Um, I would what love. A, what a spineless piece of shit you are for betting on the Astros. <laughs> what, a, what a total coward. <laughs> just, to, um, just, just to heal, yep. heal I, all the way. I mean, as soon as it happened, I bet on them, by the way. Uh, well, so somebody uh, who gave me shit, uh, Gilio said something about Mark McGuire being the best home run hitter ever. And like, I, I, somebody said something and I said, like, look, statistically, like per at bat, he's the best home run hitter ever. I wonder though, this is actually, as we draft King Sportsbook, fucking love him. We'll get back to him in a second. I would imagine you're a guy, we've never talked about this, who is like Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire should get into the Hall of Fame, right? Yes. Okay, so so why don't you like the Astros? Because I, I think, I, oh, we're do, okay. I think, yeah. uh, I think steroids are fine and should be allowed. I think this is straight up cheating, the worst in any sport anyone's ever done. Really? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. The worst that anyone's ever done? Yeah, absolutely. Or that we know about. That we yeah. know about, right. Having someone in the dugout telling you what pitch is coming and, and the possibility that they're, they're wearing a buzzer so they yeah. know even, even on the road, that's insane. 
they should all be like banished from the game. The team you know, should have to fold and move to like <laughs> Allentown. The Phillies, the Lehigh Valley Col- Iron Pigs, should have to take over <laughs> for the Astros. The uh, the Phillies got caught stealing signs from center field in 2010, which I assume they were doing in 2008 as well. Do you mean in uh, binoculars? But that's. But I mean, it's but not, cheating. But not communicating it to the dugout so that their hitters know right away. Well, they had to be doing something. They, they had to be like, I, I don't know what their system was. Because there's they some had to be gamesmanship in baseball where it's just like, if you're on second base, you got to know that he's looking, he's staring right. at the catcher's crotch and trying to get, a, get an angle on something. Baseball is, is the, the original. The tough part about this with baseball is baseball is the original. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying sport. Like sure. that's, you know, so... Um, anyway, I've never, I've never cared about steroids. In fact, I'm just, I'm continuously mad. Uh, and I got mad again watching um, Long Gone Summer, which is actually produced by my friend, Will, oh. um, that Congress spent so much money for years investigating steroid use in baseball. Right. Like what a waste of fucking time. Just years before the housing crisis. It's like, let's, let's spend a, a good chunk of time trying to get publicity by investigating baseball. And people, if they're using, if these, uh, you know, supplements are legal or, or just, just barely illegal, who gives a shit? What a waste of time. What a joke. Well, the only thing that bothers me with, because I'm not bothered by steroids either, is either you let them in or you don't. The problem is, is that if it's a, if it's a rule that you can't, and some people abide by the rule and some people don't. That's sure. the trouble. We were, at the time, it was very vague. You it know, was. There was. They weren't talking about it in like, you know, the late 90s and stuff. That's absolutely true. And, and Mark McGuire tried to convince everybody it was just his, the andro that it was doing, that he got it GNC. Who cares? Yeah. Um, Let well, him hit dingers. I, I think the, the other issue is like those dudes, whatever they were doing, Barry Bonds did not look fucking healthy, man. Like he looked... He looked like he was blowing into a balloon and uh, like it was full, but he kept blowing it and his head like got bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, sure. But I loved it. Like he's, that. And, Bonds, is, Bonds is so good, man. They, he was that, ridiculous. He's, he's so good. And, and he was so good without the steroids too. It's just, the guy's unbelievable. Um, and we were also looking at stats. We were, we were talking about it the day after Monday at work. And I was like, I was like, what was the year that Brady Anderson hit 50 home runs? Yeah, I remember that. And then we were looking the years before he hit 13, 16, and 14, right. and then 51. Yeah, no, there's he, nothing going on here. He just got a swing back. Yeah. Uh, DraftKings Sportsbook. Look, we love it. Um, it is the only place that – here, I'll look at it right now, and I'll tell you what, what you could bet on. Me, um, I don't really bet on any, like, the weird soccer leagues that I, that, that I don't know about. Uh, some people do. I, I do the casino. The DraftKings Casino, you can play right now. You can do a little roulette. You can do a little blackjack. Um, right now, they have the PGA you can bet on, RBC Heritage, uh, KBO, which is the Korean baseball. Uh, La Liga, is that soccer, I think? Uh, Premier League, UFC, all this stuff. And then there's the daily free pools, which is awesome. They have all the different promotions. Like right now, there's the American-made odds boost. You can bet on any American to win the, uh, the PGA RBC Heritage. They boost your odds from minus 200 to plus 200. And like I said, the casino, you want to kill some time, it's great. The best thing about DraftKings Sportsbook, it is the top-rated sportsbook app in all of the app store. It is like that because it works well. It's easy to figure out. It's easy to put money in. It's easy to take money out. You hear ads for these offshore sports books. Fuck that, man. You don't need it anymore, especially in PA or New Jersey. You can just use DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, It is safe. It is legal. And it is more secure than that stuff. Um, Download the DraftKings Sportsbook and Casino app right now and use promo code RTRS to play up to $200 of casino games risk-free. That's promo code RTRS to play risk-free up to $200 for your first 24 hours of casino play on DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, Pennsylvania only, in partnership with Hollywood Casino at Penn National Racecourse. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Um, are you, uh, when you go to the, are you a casino guy? And if you do, what's your game? I think we talk about, I'm a blackjack guy. Oh, right. Okay. I'm a blackjack. So I, uh, I could Did sit ever, at the black to the table for 10 hours and not, no one talk to me. I, I don't, I'm not a big talk to the table guy. Right. 
I would just like let me if I could wear sunglasses and like blinders, I would. <laughs> don't, inter- like don't interact. It sounds like one of those poker assholes. Uh, <laughs> I just show- don't want to. I just don't want to talk to people that are feel- feeling like jokesters at the blackjack table. So the the here. one the one thing. Can I tell you two funny blackjack things? Sure. Um, might as well. Okay. The first thing is, I know, like, I know the rules pretty well of blackjack, like what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and what's like iffy. Um, I, I respect them because it makes other people at the table mad when you don't play the right way. I get it. But to that, for that, like, to me, then it's no different than playing slots. So the one thing that I really like to do is if the dealer is showing a six, and I have two tens, I fucking split them. And you're not supposed to split tens ever. Against a six is the closest thing to maybe it's an okay play, but it's still best that you don't split the tens. And it makes everybody mad. The, uh, what's it called? The dealer always asks me if I'm sure, which is the don't do this thing. And I once, I forget who I was talking to about it, but I asked Hinky and I was like, I sent him a note and I'm like, look, I think I know what your answer would be on this, but would you approve of splitting tens against a six at blackjack? Um, I like to do that. Now, as usual, he doesn't totally answer. I think his answer was something to the effect of, I don't think you would like my answer. So I guess he wouldn't do it, but I like to split tens. Guy's never answered a question in his life. You're right. Got to respect it. Yeah. And then the other thing is, uh, my brother and I and his friend Paul and our friend uh, uh, Caitlin went to Las Vegas like 13 years ago or something. And um, we made up this bit about if you get two aces, you should be able to tell the dealer that you want them both to count as 11 and voluntarily bust. <laughs> <laughs> which we, this is, and this is why I put my blinders on. <laughs> which we, we refer to as well. I don't want to hear this. I don't want to hear we, <laughs> we refer to as a soft bust. So once a dealer which is, a, is at least is indisputably a funny phrase. Yes, it's very funny. So the one time we're at a dealer table and uh, and the bit was we would act as if we were both dealt we were dealt two aces and we would go oh no. Wow, I'm sorry. They're both 11. We got to choose to bust here. In my mind, so, they're 11. So we asked um, a dealer once. We asked them, could, could I choose to make them both 11 and bust? Wanted no parts of it. Um, yeah. One of our listeners, uh, Katie, who is now a lawyer, I believe, has come to several of our events, was in Las Vegas and DM'd me once. And she was like, I'm at a blackjack table. If I get two aces, I'm going to ask if I can soft bust. She did it, did not get a very approving look from the dealer. No. Um, I believe the dealer took her money, but um, <laughs> so those are my two blackjack stories. That's what you get when Tony Roten doesn't show up for the podcast. That's right. Um, so Brett Brown was interviewed by one Chris Mannix of Sports Illustrated. Chris Mannix wrote a story, something to the effect of, boy, this is the perfect spot for the Sixers to surprise everyone and, and win the championship. <laughs> It was something Everyone, like that. Everyone, the, the, the Sixers, the dumbest team in the league. People have to outthink themselves to yes. get into the right airspace that they could conceive of the Sixers actually doing the thing that they have yet to do all season. And right. you know what? I'm right there with them. The 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 headline is how everything is. You, I, I fucking love this. How everything is falling into place for the 76ers to shock the world. <laughs> the subhead is. The NBA season will resume soon. And when it does, the 76ers might be the team that benefits most after the hiatus. Um, as I've told Joe DeCamera at work, I was like, you say this, but you never have any actual reasons why it's true. Um, but a quote from Brett Brown on Ben Simmons that gained a little bit of traction, and I wanted to hear your thoughts on it. My opinion, and this is not confirmed yet, is that we are going to be able to inch him back into this of of Ben Simmons. Is he going to be 100%? I don't expect that, but I think he is going to be available. Is it just being cautious or is it? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's cautious. I mean, seemingly the back injury was way more serious 
Yeah. I guess it was always serious. He was throwing up after injuring it against the Bucks. Yeah. They still claimed, and so many things have happened. I really don't remember much about the season at all. Maybe I should start listening to our podcasts. Uh, we, we were talking about baseball today at work after the, 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 the news came out, and somebody said something about spring training happening. I didn't even remember that spring training had ever happened. Yeah. Like, it was right. so long ago. Yeah. That's so right. anyway, continue. Uh, yeah. The, we can't forget that the Sixers allowed Ben Simmons to play in the Milwaukee game, saying his back was fine when he was getting treatment in between timeouts. Um, and then quickly early, in the first quarter, right. Got hurt, hurt, his, injured his back so much yep. that he then threw up from it. Yes. And they once again, let want, want us to believe as if we are merely sheep, brainless sheep, mm-hmm. uh, opening our mouths, waiting for whatever sheep eat, uh, from, from, from their masters, the Sixers telling us, Hey, separate back thing just totally different that one yeah. part of the back and that other part of the back they Not don't related. even know each other yeah coincidence total, total coincidence. coincidence like shocking honestly what a fun surprise and like coincidental like we're actually sending it to, to like the like the science to medical science department of of crazy we're sending it to science <laughs> it's amazing that it happened like they're so they have nothing you guys don't even know like you're so not related to each other so anyway uh, very serious injury. Should have never played. Um, played in that Milwaukee game. Hasn't played since. Now it has been because that was in what February, early February. Um, the the back thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That has that's now been four months. Uh, it'll be five months before they even can start to play. So hopefully mm-hmm. he's just healed. He's certainly mm-hmm. like working out and starting to do stuff. So I think they're going to see how he looks on the court and then see how how they could bring him back. But it seems like I, I think if they're going to do the, you know, hostage Disney, then it is the right thing to do to have some games. And that'll be a perfect time to lose, get the six seed, play Ben a little bit, keep the OKC pick um, and then shock the world. And the, Oh, and okay. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, I was, I thought you were going to say, and then lose again and then just come back in December. No, I, uh, if I definitely want the six seed so we can get revenge on Boston, maybe, yeah. uh, yeah. easily, easily, uh, we discard this thing has ever happened. If they lose to Boston, I just don't think that we can stop. We can't, I cannot stomach a, a loss to Boston. I would say, uh, I want to play them so I could, we could then get revenge on Toronto. Um, but I really, 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 really want to be Boston. The, the, the Fultz thing, the, the, when they beat us in five, when it should, was way closer than five, the JJ Redick pass to no one uh, is burned into my memory. Um, now Horford, like it's it's a lot, it's a lot. We and we beat them a lot of times this year, so we we owe them a, a a real sound defeat. So hopefully that lines up and we can do that. But I think the eight games should be used to just work Ben in slowly and see how he's going and take as much precaution as possible. Um, because we don't have Tony Roten, who we love anyway, we'll always love. Uh, we'll, yeah. we'll do a couple of mailbag questions, but before that, we'll talk about. I had a really good question for him. I'm sad uh, that I didn't. We should just ask each other the questions about that we would have given Tony. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll get him back. Yeah, we will. After they, he wins the TBT championship. Um, uh, I, I will say that in general, in my career, so my, my career has spanned since for now 20, two years 21 years thinking about been, retirement no oh man i would f- I'd fucking love it uh, no you wouldn't yeah i would no hate it. you wouldn't yeah, we're yeah. doing youtube now because you want to do more work for yourself <laughs> that's a good point retirement i actually fucking love the, the people that i work with so i i like and i love this yeah, i always find something to do um uh, what were we talking about oh retirement um musicians and athletes i've been like mostly involved with when they have somebody who has to do it who has to like get them to do something for me and i don't have to worry about it it is way less and you've seen me before lottery parties and uh, live pods nightmare because i am i almost don't talk to you all the whole time until i until we start we, on the stage we lost robert covington for like two days before the lottery party like i don't remember that there's a a first class 
fucking plane ticket from Nashville that never got used. God bless him. Um, because we couldn't find him. It, it's so nerve wracking. Anyway, um, the Rice Ricky Sanchez podcast is brought to you by L.L. Pavorsky Jewelers, who I know was very excited for Tony to be on the pod. And maybe he could hook Tony up with an engagement ring at some point. Um, 177 um, uh, engagement rings sold to Rice Ricky Sanchez listeners. And L.L. back in the store by appointment only. That's right. And the reason he's doing it by appointment only is because he wants it to be safe for you. So he, you will be the only person in the store with LL, with Jeffrey, maybe, um, looking at the jewelry. And he will make sure before and after everything's wiped down, clean. He'll have that giant welding mask on and the, the face mask and all that. So even if something gets through the, the medical mask, it gets hit by the shield. Um, all that stuff. And if you don't feel comfortable coming in the store, that's fine too. He can do the appointment with you online. He has invested like in your feeling comfortable with the experience. Buying an engagement ring is expensive. You want to make sure that you do it with somebody who you can trust. And LL is that guy. I trust him. I trust him with my, my life. Um, I would let him operate on me. And just like we're saluting Touchstone uh, home products and, and fireplaces for matching our script thing, LL has been doing the donation thing for years now. So uh, all of his, uh, for every pod, makes donations to Coded by Kids in the Providence Animal Center. So if you want to get in touch with LL to get your appointment in the store for an engagement ring or just do it online, uh, give him a call, 215-627-2252. Shoot him an email, lee at llpavorsky.com. You can tweet at him at llpavorsky. Uh, and the store is right there at 707 Walnut. Um, very proud to have LL being the original sponsor of the Ricky. LL Pavorsky Jewelers. Holding a reality show to find a wife for Tony Roden. LL Pavorsky Jewelers. There you go. So this comes from Steve. And the subject line is asterisks. And I thought it was a, a good email. All of the discussions about whether the eventual champ this year will get an asterisk seem to miss the point that we likely won't know for a few years if there is going to be an asterisk. And then at some time in the not too distant future, it will become obvious. During the prior two NBA lockouts, the titles were won by the Duncan Spurs and LeBron's Heat. Both of those teams went on to win other championships. And now 99 is just one of the five Spurs titles. And 2012 was the start of the Heat back-to-backs. Honestly, people talk more about Rose's injury that year as an asterisk than they do about how crazy the shortened schedule was. But if Shaq and Kobe had gotten along better and crushed the Spurs through the 2000s until Duncan left for obscurity in Orlando, that 99 season would be a crazy outlier uh, we'd never discuss without people bringing it up. And if Ray Allen missed that three in game six and LeBron's only heat chip was in 2012, I guarantee the lockout asterisk would be a thing. The Sixers are a perfect test case for this. If they pull the season out of their asses and hoist the non-Summer League Orlando banner, the immediate talk is going to be all about the asterisk. Then if Embiid is never healthy again and the team never returns to a finals, it will be the first thing anyone mentions when they mention the 2020 championship. However, it winds up just being one of multiple Embiid Simmons titles. That narrative will die a quick death. We've only had two test cases for this in NBA history. Neither one is as weird as this. And in both cases, subsequent events kept kept it from seeming like an outlier. There's a handful of true title. Uh, what did he say? Oh, imagine how we would view 99 if the Spreewell Knicks had won the title. There's a handful of true title favorites with a better claim to a legitimate 2020 championship based on how we currently view the teams ordered. But it, the more I think about anyone outside of the two LA teams is going to need to follow it up to have any chance of avoiding the asterisk. Do the Bucks or anyone else actually escape this if they never make it back? It's a really good point that the asterisk only exists if it's your only title mm -hmm. and that you can legitimize the asterisk by being actually good afterwards. And I don't think anyone's brought this up before. No one said this to me. And it's, I think it's a really interesting and obvious point. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, I, the solution is to win multiple titles. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, uh, hey guys, just listen to, uh, this comes from Chris. Um, I nearly shit myself when I heard you reading my email, uh, two coach emails, and then we're done. Uh, I nearly shit myself when I heard you reading about my email about Sam Cassell. I couldn't agree more about point guards getting all the jobs. I'm a 6'8 former D2 player. And all right, got rub past, it in. 
<laughs> yeah, you're, you're, it's like Mike's dream and got passed over for a head coaching job at a local high school. Big men don't get the respect that we deserve. Um, anyway, love the pod. And once the city opens again for a great haircut, check out American Mortals, three locations in the city. Sorry, had to get the plug in for the girlfriend. Stay safe. Um, and then finally, one other um, coach email. This comes from AJ. You guys were talking about a big man as the next Sixers coach on the last pod. As much as it pains me to discuss Brett getting fired, you passed over the most obvious guy that the Sixers will 100% try to interview, Tim Duncan. The hypothetical is completely dependent on Udoka being okay with working as an assistant under Duncan. But the Udoka, Spurs, by the way, uh, interviewed for the Knicks or planned to interview for the Knicks head Knicks, coaching job. Yeah. Now the Knicks said they were going to interview eight, eight, uh, eight or ten. I wonder if all this Udoka stuff is agent fuel to get his name out there specifically because i think it's interesting that we've heard it twice now um along with the opportunity to duncan to work with a potential franchise with with a potential franchise team uh and we know scott o'neill would love the optics of bringing in a world famous athlete as the coach let me know what you think you're the only sports pod i've listened to during the pandemic we're not a sports pod by the way uh keep up the great work aj tim duncan would be an interesting name i'll tell you it would publicly it would it would like resonate very well like you wouldn't get any negative feedback to tim duncan getting the job i don't think god imagine how boring the post game press conference oh, would be. the worst yep charming brett versus this like dull monotone duncan duncan from, from all intents seems like a funny guy like in private but like not to the press at all no um sure i like him you have tall um he's only been an assistant for a year i guess i don't know i just i i generally don't think we have an idea of what makes coaching candidates good yeah and certainly just being a very good player does not have any indication one way or the other one way or the other of whether you're going to be good as a coach yeah, yeah i agree now you would imagine he seems like the kind of player who would be, I guess. And you would have to imagine that toward the end of his career, um, he participated in that some, but it is really hard to tell who would, would be good at that and who wouldn't. He does seem interested in it, which is, well, maybe they should just hire Hibbert, like straight from fucking intern to. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? He maybe. seems like, I wonder if we could get Hibbert on the pod. I would love to have Hibbert on the pod. Sure you know yeah. um anyway uh well that's it a couple of notes uh the uh carl landry record club album of the week is brian fallon's local honey and the new t-shirts four new t-shirts will be available thursday um i don't want to say them yet but they are so good sign up for the newsletter uh just go to rights ricky sanchez.com slash newsletter and um so they're so good um, there you go. yeah and they should be available thursday well tony roten um we didn't, we didn't get tony but i we have another guest that you booked next week i i just got confirmation of an of another guest that i'll tell you about so oh really some things happening guest uh Guests oh yeah, yeah well, coming up we, yeah we have well the one that i booked is july um and are we going to do that thing on sunday uh i have to check still Okay. All right. So we might have something coming up on Sunday. Guests coming up. Uh, still fucking so many weeks till basketball, oh if it God. even happens. And maybe, maybe, maybe a year. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter to us. We, we did a podcast yeah. three days ago and there were like eight news items that we had to cover. <laughs> yes. What's going on? We have plenty. Look, we, the, Tony Rohn didn't even show up. We were like, fine. We'll just yeah. fucking talk. There's yeah. a DH now. I, are, you, are you a DH guy? I am. No. Not. Okay. Thank not God. Not at all. What a Thank joke. God. Uh, th please preach mike it's it's ridiculous it's uh it's like it's not regular baseball it's like something that you would do in like a, an old man rec league or something so the pitcher wouldn't have to like run out of breath running to second because it's the fat guy yeah he's got bad knees so he's gonna have a sub runner bad yeah. knees it's horseshit i'm glad um it's really sad that at this point, we've started agreeing. We've been doing the pod sure, so yeah. long. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, DH is bad. And like, imagine watching baseball and you're just like, hmm, I'd like to see less strategy. Yeah. Less, less like intrigue and different. Let's just have everybody that's like 
mostly the same. Even the idea of a person only batting. Yeah. Just sitting down for three hours mostly. Yeah. If you're going to be the – maybe, maybe you had a 10th fielder and that person is only allowed to play in foul territory. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> just get the fastest fucking guy you could. Yeah. Bring, bring back Juan Pierre and just have him he, – he, he just kind of like – he basically sits where like the, the ball girl or ball boy sits. Yeah. And as long as if there's a foul ball, he can try to catch it. I love it. Um, all right, so T-shirts tomorrow and then the script on the 25th and then guests coming. Um, I'm very excited for the guest that I booked and I'm excited to hear the one you have because I don't even think I know where it is. So it's great. Um, are you down with TTP? Yeah, you know lick phase. If you don't fuck with me, then I won't fuck with you. If you don't fuck with me, then I won't fuck with you. If you don't fuck with me, then I, then I won't fuck, fuck with you. you. If you don't fuck with me, then I, I won't, I won't fuck, fuck, with fuck with you. But if you fuck with me, I'm gonna fucking kill you! That's a plan B.